today and welcome to the webinar hosted by Baker Baines based on finite element analysis with Autodesk inventor Nastrand. Just to give you a quick introduction to myself, my name is Daniel, I'm an accomplished speaker, professional trainer, uh, Autodesk certified professional. I have uh, over 10 years experience within the Autodesk industry, um, you know, and I hold a mechanical engineering as well as an Autodesk data management and manufacturing qualification. So let's move on onto uh, the webinar itself and the topic itself. So we're looking at final element analysis within Inventor Nastran, so for short, FEA. So just to recap, on our previous webinar, we looked at simulation tools available to you. And firstly, we looked at Inventor on its own, so Inventor Professional. You'll find that you've got three different types of analysis that could take place in here. Uh, from an FEA point of view, first is uh, linear static, so uh, static strips uh, that can be simulated within Inventor. Second being assembly modeling with contact, so contact analysis uh, can be done in here. And the final being modal analysis, right? So the normal mode, so the frequencies that could be simulated within Inventor. If we look at Autodesk uh, uh, mechanical tools on the whole, we find that we've got other capabilities and more extended capabilities that we can also look at. Apart from just the three that we mentioned, uh, you've got pre static stress uh, for modal analysis, linear steady uh, heat transfer, composites, buckling, as well as thermal stress. Now, simulation recap, uh, based off our discussion on the last topic, we spoken about uh, uh, the uh, stress analysis environment, but we focused predominantly on something called dynamic simulation. For example, the first example on screen, you'll find that this is a dynamic simulation of a ball that's going to fall down the stair. Now, in here, we want to test the trajectory of the ball and how it will roll down and what it will look like. Now, in here, you'll find that the forces that act on impact can be taken into the uh, FEA environment for uh, final element analysis uh, to look and see what was the impact, uh, what was the force on the stay by the ball, and what was the impact of force acting on the ball. Now, just to uh, summarize it, we in this example we looked at predominantly, uh, as you can see there, so predominantly we looked at the trajectory that it was coming out, uh, giving us in here, based off real life forces. Now, uh, there's things like gravity that take uh, that's, that's taken into consideration is the weight of the ball, of course, as well as the height. Now, if we play the simulation, as you can see in there, you can see the ball fell down, bounced over a couple of stairs, and it went further. So we can also adjust the time and the frames. Let's play it again, and you can see that trajectory that it imposed. So that was the first example that we looked at. The second one was something that we basically worked in, which was the Newton's cradle. And you can see in here that you know by adding uh, some properties to the uh, the model, we were able to simulate motion, and that motion was just not simulation. It was, it was just not sorry animation. It was actually a simulation of the movement based off the forces inputted, and that in turn had a resulting force which moved the other two balls as well. Now. We could go into a lot more detail on that, but I think on this one, we're going to look at the stress analysis side of what happens next. So, very important in the simulation environment, you get the forces. If you don't know them, you can get the forces acting on a body, and that force needs to be worked on. So, it needs to be translated into the FEA environment. And of course, we would need to understand what type of simulation we're going to use to achieve the results we need. So. Designing of machines as a problem. So here's the typical challenges that come with design and which often require engineering judgment regarding the objects, sizing, material, as well as design. So complex assemblies with modular designs, that's generally a big challenge. Uh, variety of operational loads, combination, uh, a combination of loads, that's also fairly challenging in many design environments. Moving parts with the wide range of motion, again, that's where your dynamics will come into play. And of course, combination of materials. So not all the time that we design with one specific material, there's many materials involved. And sometimes it's interesting to see how those materials behave under certain conditions. Again, loading during uh, 
uh, shipping, transportation, or assembly, what happens to our products. So these challenges can be uh, superimposed by uncertainties with the final application or temporary application, which is not covered by intended specifications, all right? The latter often happens when the product specifications needs to be extended. So some of the strategies, there's different ways to verify if the design uh, forms as intended. The ranges from applying prior experience to uh, outsourcing simulations and building prototypes. Most of them are associated with a couple of drawbacks. Let's look at the first one, setting up manual calculations or spreadsheets can be time consuming. We all know that that needs to be correct. And it often forces engineers to be considerably simply uh, to, to considerably simplify the real physical situation that they have. Sometimes outsourcing and physical prototyping can be convenient, but both come with quite significant cost of money and time. Uh, again, I mean, just creating a physical prototype sometimes can take time. Uh, and of course, time evaluates to money, so that could become costly. Final element simulation has been uh, an established method in engineering, and I'm sure we all understand that. But most analysis are limited to linear static simulations. Uh, basically, what we've seen in the inventor, uh, professional with a linear static uh, simulation. With some materials, for example, plastics, this can lead to oversimplification, or if they cannot reflect repetitive loading, this can sometimes lead to failure. Now, let's look at what Autodesk can provide us from a simulation point of view. And this is a holistic um, look at what Autodesk have on the offering when it comes to uh, simulation. So, specifically, uh, the FEA side of it, as well as fluids. Now, if I look at the structural or mechanics of it, we've got Autodesk Nastran, we've got Fusion 360 that has got basically the Nastran engine in for the simulation side of it. For the structural or the BIM side of it, we've got robot structural analysis, fluid dynamics, there's Autodesk CFD, injection molding, there's Autodesk Mold Flow Advisor and Mold Flow Insight. If we're looking at composites, um, composite materials, there's uh, Autodesk Helios PFA as well as uh, Autodesk Helios Composite. Editor manufacturing, which uh, has been quite popular and is gaining quite, quite a bit of popularity um, as we look uh, and discuss with customers nowadays, we find that lots of uh, clients are, are looking at additive manufacturing uh, and some of them are doing a hybrid. So it could be uh, a bit of additive and subtractive. However, in this scenario, Autodesk has you covered with a solution called NetFab for that. So today's exercise or today's webinar, we're going to specifically focus on the, the mechanical side of it, which is going to be Autodesk Inventor Nastran as well as the Fusion Engine. So an overview of it, Autodesk Nastran, a CAD enabled finite element analysis tool uh, powered by Autodesk Nastran Solver, which offers a wide range of simulations uh, spanning across multiple analyst types, such as linear and non-linear analysis, dynamics, and heat transfer. It provides a consistent user experience and eliminates the need for multiple single platform simulation technologies. Inventor Nastran delivers high-end simulation technology in an affordable subscription in the product design and manufacturing collection. So you can get Inventor Nastran within the collection uh, to take your simulation capabilities to the next level. You've got some advanced uh, tools in here. So of course this Nastran solver technology, uh, analysis, for, uh, analysis for composite materials, non-linear dynamics, as we discussed, integrated, so it is integrated within Inventor, so there's no need to export a file or save a file out. Um, if you're using Vault uh, as a PDM uh, product data management tool, um, it's, it is supported in that, so your analysis results can be vaulted and managed correctly within one single, um, single destination of files. Um, as well as multi-CAD support via Autodesk Inventor. So that is the AnyCAD function. So if you don't work with, in, uh, so for example, if you don't have an Inventor file, it could be a step file or uh, a file from a different uh, 3D CAD model, um, that could be brought in via Inventor AnyCAD and simulated within Nastran. So Nastron, Inventor Nastran goes beyond standard final element analysis, as we've seen. 
It also provides access to various dynamic and frequency-based study types, such as random response. Uh, an example of that is checking for stress and strains as a result of random vibration, right? Which generally often quite, happens quite often. Um, uh, response section. So an example of that is very interesting to check for earthquake response or response from a rocket launcher, for example, as well as frequency response, which is again virtual vibration test bench. So we can check uh, the vibrations again. And this is also coupled with heat transfer analysis. And you can see on screen, these are all of the uh, uh, results or the, the, what you can achieve using uh, Invent and Astran from the simulation point of view. If we look at it more technically, so a technical spotlight on this, from the study types, uh, you'll see a little screen grab on the right hand side of the screen. Um, there's a couple in here. So element types, beam, shell, uh, solids, linear, quadratic. We can also do rigid connection, bolted connections, as well as cable and springs, which is very, very interesting uh, within an assembly environment. Mesh refinement, so you can refine your mesh to be uh, uh, more refined to optimize your results, um, as well as mixed mesh uh, results. So, you know, mixed mesh is possible in here as well. Uh, Inventor Nastran supports symmetry modeling and axis symmetry segments. Uh, material model, so uh, you can also get electro, uh, uh, sorry, plastic, nonlinear uh, elastic, as well as uh, elastoplastic. Uh, progressive P uh, ply uh, failure analysis, so PPFA is in here as well, um, as well as curves uh, for fatigue, right? So uh, S and then SE. Contact model separations, offset, bonded, sliding, no separation, sliding separation, chin fit. Uh, which is sliding, no, which is sliding and non-sliding uh, contact that can be achieved in here. So let's have a look and feel at what Inventor Nastran looks like. So I've got a video here that I want to show you, and with simulation capabilities, the team can of course quickly validate their designs and improve on the product performances. Uh, proper validation process with quick feedback to design also ease of use downstream uh, for other departments that may need to use it. Uh, but also understanding the downstream impact in production and service reduces the amount of uh, fire rules within the organization to give you some examples of linear stress, thermal stress and fatigue. So let's have a look and see what's going on. We can pick the materials um, within Nastran, as you can see. Um, from the, our mesh, we can change the element size of the mesh, uh, check the tolerances and then run the mesh. As you can see, the model has been meshed. We're going to put in our constraints now to our fixing points, basically. Add the constraints in. The next is to add in the loads. And you can see the workflow from left to right. Run the simulation. As you can see, the solver, we can play the animation of the simulation to see what's going on. It gives us the results. So this is solid von Mises stress. We can also work through other bits where that needs to be modified and fixed. And again, going into it, we can see what is going on in here. Okay, so that's just a quick snippet of what Inventor Nastran looks like. Uh, so uh, if we look at another example in here, this is an excav excavator cabin roof, so falling objects, uh, protective structure, right? Uh, objects must, must not penetrate the cabin roof. So this is a typical uh, design uh, example for when you're designing something and in this case we're looking at a falling object uh, on an excavator roof. Uh, so the test object was 300 kilograms, free fall from 3 meters, the impact was at 27 kilometers per hour. So earth moving machinery cabins need to withstand vertical impact uh, of a test object as we can see here. Uh, in here it's highly recommended for safety, of course, of the person in the cabin to be protected. So definitely a test, a simulation test would need to be happen. Uh, this is highly dynamic impact. And using Inventor Nastran's explicit solver, we can compute the uh, if our design can take the impact of the load or not, and we can see what the results will be. So in here, as you can see, the uh, computation of it. So the design has been simulated, and we can see what has impacted all right uh, within the animation now this is has been of course preset and ran so we would be able to see what impact and what forces were acting on it and what was the end result of that 
Again, uh, lots of uh, people that make use of uh, frame generated within inside of Inventor. So frame analysis uh, that could also be taken into uh, into Inventor Nastran, right? Um, in here, we first run a real time dependent transient analysis to obtain the temperature distribution after 30 minutes, assuming a fire temperature of 800 degrees on the hot side of the frame. In the next step, this temperature distribution is used to determine how thermal expansion will deform our steel frame member, as we can see on screen. This includes softening of the steel under high temperature, temperature dependent based off Young's modulus, right? So let's have a look at what goes on in here. Within inside of Inventor, this is the frame generator. We take it to our environments. And as you can see, Inventor Nastran is, is basically uh, a tab inside of Inventor Professional. Uh, we can go in and pick the steps that we're going to work off uh, in here. So we're going to plot a graph. Uh, it's thermal analysis. The type is going to be temperature. We can plot it out and we can have a look at what the results are going to be. We can go into degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin, depending on what your preference is. And we can have a look at that by just hovering the cursor over it or clicking on a segment. We will be able to see what results we achieved. In here, we can go and activate an analysis two, which has been done in there to see our load node connection points. We can start looking at the loads in here, modify load, set our time step, and we can also check what the results look like. So in here, go in here, have a look at the results. Now we're going to check for displacement. It's going to be actual. And our probes tell us the maximum displacement at the maximum and minimum areas. And we can see there's a maximum displacement of 158.9 millimeters in there. All right, so that's a very, very nice way to have a look at it. Um, moving along from there, we can see on the left hand side, cool down of a uh, casted part after it was taken out of the mold. So how long until its core temperature is below a certain temperature, that can be determined in here. In the middle uh, middle screen in there, you'll find that a door or window ceiling being compressed. Does it seal correctly? Are the stresses too high for the sealing material? And on the right hand side here, it's a punch drawing. How much of force to determine uh, to deform the blank? What's the maximum plastic stress or uh, that it can take plastic deformation within the final part? Uh, would it rip during the deformation process? These are these are the hard to, or these are the questions that can be answered um, by doing a simulation using in the international. And then one more example uh, of here on the left hand side, you see a nonlinear buckling of a bucket. How much load can it take before it buckles? And where should we add reinforcement to the structure of it? All right. And of course, on the right hand side is uh, a projectile that hits several layers of plate. How many layer of, layers of plate will it penetrate? What is the impact forces? So these are nice little examples that you can see. Um, I mean, on the right hand side could be a bullet or something moving at a specific trajectory toward, through the plate. And what was the impact resulting forces of that? And how many plates? is required to stop that projectile moving across. So just to give you a brief understanding on what it does, this is uh, also this Nastran uh, looking at that. And if you want to know more about Invent Nastran, please feel free to get in contact and we'll surely be able to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for attending and have a great day further.